Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day as we begin the fourth week of Easter, but also on this very special day, which is May 1st, which we celebrate St. Joseph the Worker. And let us bless all those who are engaged in all forms of work. And let us remember those who are looking for work and those who are discouraged workers. And let us pray for all that we may recognize Recognize that work is a blessing from you and one that leads us to glorify your name. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is in fact May 1st, and an optional memorial we have today is the uh, memorial of St. Joseph the Worker. Now, there's a reason why we actually have this day. And if you're saying, well, isn't this the day that the communists celebrate as their own? Yes, it is. And so the church, in order to recognize that we're counter to communism, but we also realize, like the communists realize, the importance of the worker, and I'll talk about that in a minute, we called uh, May 1st St. Joseph the Worker. As I said, we do not believe in communism, but we also believe in supporting the needs of the worker. Now, one of the major differences between communism and other systems is communism, in theory, is actually a... Um, the, the It's a dictatorship of the pro- proletariat, which means it's the worker who runs the the nation in theory. I remember speaking to a Vietnamese priest who's living here. It was a fascinating story because you have to remember I'm a baby boomer. I'm not old enough to have been uh, in the Vietnam War, but I'm old enough to have grown up with it. Uh, I entered the Navy not too long after the Vietnam War ended, and so I dealt with a lot of veterans. And he was talking about how he flew into Hanoi to went to to go to an ordination. And I spoke to him afterwards. I said, you know, for for those of us who are veterans and grew up during the time of the Vietnam War to hear things like that. So nonchalantly, in a sense, he wasn't nonchalant, but just say, well, I flew into Hanoi. He was going to give it. He was giving a talk. And I went to an ordination of seminarians who were becoming priests. And I'm like, this was something that would be completely unheard of, not the least of which is flying into Hanoi. So it was actually rather fascinating. And he said to me, he says, well, actually, and he never really explained what that meant. He says, communism is a concept. I said, because didn't you have a hard time with the communists? He says, communism is a concept. And that's that's what he said. I don't know exactly what that means, but that's what he said. And here we are today recognizing the celebration of workers on this day and labor and the importance of labor, especially those who are looking for a job and can't find one. And so here we are. Uh, It's a concept that we think of communism, but it's not a concept that we think of the importance of work. But Christ-centered importance. Now, one of the best books to read on that is He Leadeth Me, where that issue is is dealt with. I've spoken to you before of a priest who was in the gulags in the Soviet Union and decided that even though he was a slave to the gulags forced to build ho- uh, houses in Siberia, he decided that he was going to do this as a service to God and to glorify God. And so he tried to do the best work he had, which is the attitude that we're called to have as people who are servants of God. But I think in light of that, and something that happened a couple weeks ago, and maybe I could mention this in Revo, I'm not going to mention any brand names, you'll know who I'm talking about, but we're going to talk about a beer company that went into a lot of trouble. And there's an interesting thing to look at, because there's a lot of political issues that that focused on this beer company. Now, something I need to, to tell you, this revolved around light beer, And I very, very, very rarely drink. Uh, You know, for the most part, I tell people I don't drink. Uh, And for the most part, that's true. When I do have uh, a drink, it's always a beer. And it is in the most controlled circumstances. For example, I can't be driving at any point either to or from the place. I can't be driving for the rest of the night. So if I happen to be on on hospital duty where I may have to drive to the hospital, I can't be drinking that day. 
And so no driving whatsoever. That's rule number one. And number two, it has to be a situation where I know that uh, I won't be involved in anything where having an alcohol drink, an alcohol drink would be a problem. And I will only have one beer. So it's under extremely controlled circumstances. Now, I'll drink non-alcoholic beer until the cows come home. As a matter of fact, I have, whenever I bring it into the house, I always tell the people who are living with me, I says, you know, you can drink this until Jesus comes back and you won't get drunk because this is non-alcoholic beer. So I will drink non-alcoholic beer, but I never, ever, ever, ever drink a light beer, because if I'm going to have that one beer I'm going to have once in a great, great while, it's not going to be a light beer. So I just wanted to preface that and then tell you the rest of the story on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony Overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WEZE. You can now leave a message for us, which we can air and discuss on this program. Just call 617-297-7452. That's 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. Feel free to call, leave a comment, a question, or even feedback, and we may play it on the air. I can discuss your comment or question as well, so give that a try. 617-297-7452. 617-297-7452. And don't forget our own website, Catholic Audio Media. Com. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com. Check out our website. Check out the archives of the show. And uh, also, you can connect with us. By the way, you can hear the program at our parish website, stanthonyalston.org, and click on where it says radio show, and that'll remind you to come to church here at St. Anthony in Alston, Massachusetts. And uh, that's obviously for the people in the Boston area, but if you happen to be in another part of the world and you happen to be uh, in the Boston area for some time, check us out, 43 Holton Street in Alston, Massachusetts. So anyway, we're talking about the reality of work on this May 1st. And one of the fascinating things, we all know the story of the light bear. I'm not going to go into too many details, but and we all know there was a failure there that caused an extreme reaction to the brand name well what happened there was a disconnect from the workers who drink the beer i mean put it really simple there was a disconnect from the workers and this is an issue because the other problem was people boycotted it was very successful we all know the whole story but there were a lot of workers that manufacture the beer including the non-alcoholic beer that i drink there are a lot of workers that manufacture the beer so the boycott sent a message regardless of where you stand on it but it also hurt the workers so you have to look at how do you do i mean there are people say i will never go back to that brand again okay so you're going to say that to someone who manufactures that beer he's doing his job he's supporting his family there was a there was a video that came out and said that and you're going to turn around and say, because of this marketing decision? But there's another thing there as well, and that is the... Uh, this is one of the issues that we have in our country. I don't know anything about the marketing person, so I have no idea who the marketer was. Or I do know who the marketer was, but I don't know that much about her history. But let me say this. One of the issues we have in our country is there are people that end up going to these elite schools and I'm surrounded by one of them, who have never lived in the real world. They'll go to these elite elementary schools, these elite junior high schools, these elite high schools, and then they get into these elite college. So they've never been into the real world. Now, the reaction to this beer came from basically the blue-collar workers of the United States. And one of the questions I had, if this is the kind of education you have Have you ever spoken to anyone who worked on a farm? Have you ever spoken to anyone who was put out of fire? Have you actually actually spoken to real people? Now, I was a sailor, so I've spoken to real... I dealt with a lot of real people, obviously, and I I was a real people, but... (laughs) And, you know, real people, and I know how they are. I remember when I was in the Navy, one of the things you have to do when you pull into a port is someone has to throw like a lasso uh, of a rope that goes to the pier and then someone grabs that thrown lasso and uses it to pull the rope from the ship 
to the pier, and these guys were great at it. And I said, well, where did they learn to do that? And I realized because they grew up in farms. They grew up in ranches, actually. That would be a better thing uh, because ranches have animals, farms have plants. I, I mean, granted, it's not that strict of a difference, but it's in there. So they grew up in ranches. So that's where they learned how to do that. These were real... Uh, you know, we were all real people in the Navy, and I know some of them would be. I'm never going to drink that beer again. One of my favorite stories is when I went to Japan, and there were guys that they would go to the bar and they would order this particular, very commonly known, uh, was then an American brand. I'll talk about that in a second. And I'm like, well, you're in Japan. Why don't you drink Japanese beer? And they go, it's imported now. <laughs> yes, indeed it is. That's right. By the way, the brand made, made is a historic American brand, but it's not owned by American companies anymore, uh, just so you know. But but you can see that. That's part of of understanding the worker, of knowing the workers and, and working with the workers and not just coming up with your own idea that you've never been outside your bubble. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out Catholic TV. Com. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.